Hello, hello, hello. If you haven't got a seat already, please come in and grab a seat. If you're still eating, that's all right. Just bring it with you. Uh, hopefully we're all together, young and old, for the beginning of our harvest celebrations today. So come on in, everybody. Isn't it amazing to be in this place? Is everyone warm enough? Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Um, the, the radiators will probably go on and off as the service goes on and keep us warm, but it's nice to be in a, a vaguely warm building. So lots to be thankful for, and I thought we could start with some words of praise. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Please would you stand as we get ready to thank and praise and worship God today. Hello, Obi. Father God, we just give you thanks and praise to be here today in the warmth, in a lovely building that you have provided for us. We're here to thank you for every good gift we receive. So as we worship here again, Lord, please send your Holy Spirit. Fill us with love and power and peace and joy. And as we look to you and give you thanks today, please would you meet us with your face alight with joy to see us, your people, in this place. Help us to worship you now. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Celebrate God in every song we sing and 
good start. Celebrate God. What we're going to do now, if you have brought any harvest gifts, I know it's all very last minute because we didn't know we were going to be able to use the building till the middle of the week. So um, it may be that you haven't brought any harvest gifts, but if you have, in the next song, please bring them. There's a table there and there's already two pots of porridge and we're going to build it up. This year the gifts are going to Croft Academy. So um, please bring stuff. If you haven't got anything this week, you can come next week because it's half term. So let's sing Harvest Samba. And if you have anything and you want to bring it to the front, now is the time to do it. Let's go.
redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There is joy in this house. Thank you, Lord, for the joy in, the, in this place today. Thank you that you are a God of joy. Thank you for our kids running around and causing trouble, which is just the way we want it, Lord. Um, yeah, thank you, Lord. Amen. Have a seat. Um, I think the plan is that kids can go to the back of church and there's stuff there while, while um, we pray and read the Bible and all that kind of thing. So if you're a kid and you wanted to go to your group, that's at the back right now. Um, thank you, thank you. Well done, everybody. Oh, Eddie's going to get a tin of beans, is he? No, he's not. And um, yeah, I think Emma is going to come and lead us in our prayers right now. Is everybody warm enough? Just, just make sure you know. Thank you very much. So let's pray. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. So loving God, we give you thanks for this amazing world that you created. We give you thanks that you have provided us with everything we need, not just to survive, but to thrive and to be nurtured in your love. So Lord, we give you thanks for your creation. But Lord, we, we also remember that there are so many broken systems in this world, so many things that we have taken and messed up. So in this time, we lift before you all those who are struggling to stay warm or struggling to just make ends meet and to, to eat or to clothe themselves. So Lord, we lift all of that up before you. And we ask that you continue to defend the poor and to provide provision for all who need it. So in this short time of silence, you're invited to pray for any countries or places or situations that just need God's love and provision at this time.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we think of all the people in our town of Warsaw who are struggling, but we also give you thanks for all those people who have been called to tackle those injustices and those situations and to work to provide so tirelessly for all those who need it. So we pray for those people, Lord, whether it be volunteers in food banks or night shelters or people who just provide warmth and a place of welcome. We give you thanks that you have called them and equipped them with all the talents they need to build your kingdom here, Lord. So we'll just have a short time of silence where we can just give thanks for everybody who tries to build this kingdom of God in the town of Warsaw. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we remember that harvest isn't just a time of gathering, food, gathering in food, but it's also a time of change. It's a changing of the seasons. And so in this space, we'll, we'll just take some time to recognize all the changes that we've been through. Lord, we give you thanks for everybody who's worked so tirelessly over the years to, to not just keep this church going, but to revive it and to breathe new life into it. So Lord, we give you thanks for all the people who've worked so tire, tirelessly to give us this, this amazing new building. But Lord, we'd also like to give thanks for the community hall and for the welcome that it is provided us and allowed us to continue to do your work in this town. And we'd also like to give you thanks for the time we've had with our curate Chris and for everything that he's contributed to this place, all the, the energy that he's brought to this church's mission and I guess the fact that every time he ever does something it rains. Lord, we, we give you thanks. So I'll we'll have a short time of silence where we, we can just lift up to God any changes that are happening in our lives, whether they're exciting or scary or just something that we're worried about. We'll just have some time where you can lift that up before God now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we'll just take some time to pray for ourselves. Lord, you are a God of change. You, all, you always want to call us forward and bring us into new things. And even though those things may be exciting or frightening, you are a God who is always with us and always provides us with what we need. So Lord, we give you thanks that you love us so completely and have equipped us with your provision and your protection and your guidance. So we'll just take a few moments to pray for ourselves.
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, Emma. Yeah, there's so much to be thankful for today. Um, the building, the heating, which is kind of working, and um, it's been a long journey for us, hasn't it? Um, it's, it's 10 years since I first darkened the doors. Um, we've had a team from Aldridge come in, and basically, with God's grace, with his kindness and goodness, we've seen this church continue where it was set to close, and we can thank God for that. And um, seeing the changes in the building, is as nothing compared to the changes in us over those 10 years and the people we've managed to reach with the good news about Jesus. So we can thank God that we've reached a landmark today. Another landmark we wanted to reach was planting as we have been planted. We came from, some of us came from Aldrich Parish Church and joined the, the we, the us that were already here. And it was always the plan that under God's good grace that we might be able to see this happen somewhere else uh, and help another church to get going again. And uh, that's why God sent us Chris. And Chris, come up here now, because today is the day where after how long is it? Three or four years? Three and a half? Three and a bit. Three and a bit years. Chris has done a heck of a lot of work, not just here, in the, some of the most difficult times we've had, those COVID times. Uh, but he's also done a heck of a lot of work at Beacon Church at Fizi. And um, finally, we've had the go-ahead. Uh, Chris and the church there have agreed and that's what they want to do. They want to, the, the fresh start, similar to some of the things that have happened here. So today we're going to pray for Chris and send him out with all the others uh, that are already there. God has kind of gathered a team. It hasn't worked out exactly as we envisaged, I, don't, I think it's fair to say. But something good is happening under God's grace. And um, it's great for us to know that we've been a part of that too, all part of the plan that we had. So Chris, tell us all about it. Uh, tell us all about the launch, and when we come to that, you've been handing flyers out, and we can send out information later, but tell us all about it, and then we'll pray for you. Thank you. It's lovely to see you all. I'm sorry I haven't been around very much <laughs> recently, uh, but things started to really uh, come to a head up at uh, Beacon Church over the last uh, month or so. Put your hands up if you know where Feezy is. That's more than I expected. <laughs> no one knows where Feezy is. People have lived in Warsaw all of their lives. I said, where is Feezy? So if you go up the Sutton Road, uh, towards the top, where you get to the traffic lights of Beacon, uh, Bar Beacon, and turn right down past Bar Beacon School, there's an estate down there, uh, Feezy and Park Farm. And right in the middle of Feezy is Beacon Church. Um, it was originally an Anglican church. Uh, about 25 years ago, the Methodist Church on the estate uh, the building shut down and the Methodists kind of moved in uh, with the Anglicans. They formed what they called a, uh, I don't know, an LEP, a local ecumenical project or partnership or something like that. Um, so they've been in for about 25 years. Started to see decline or more decline. Both churches were already declining. And the writing was really on the wall. Uh, they were looking to probably shut down in the next uh, few years. Uh, it was getting that bad. And there would have been no church at all uh, on that estate, which would have been uh, awful, really. So uh, we started to look at what options are out there for where we might seek to try and revitalise the church. And uh, Gavin and I came up with a number of options. We came to one decision, uh, one, one thought, and put that to the bishop. The bishop said no. But then the bishop came back and said, would we look at uh, Beacon Church? Uh, so we did, and the doors started to open, uh, really, I think. Um, people seemed to be up for it, and as I understand about St Peter's, there was just that openness to trying something new, to trying, uh, trying to make it work, trying to stay open, um, <clears throat> even though that would mean a huge amount of uh, change uh, for them. Uh, so overnight, a bit like here, we got rid of the robes and the dog collar, we got rid of the processing and the service booklets, uh, started doing things in a much more contemporary, informal, relaxed uh, kind of way. And immediately we just started to see families come back into the church. It's incredible how actually when you create an environment which is welcoming and open uh, to families uh, coming in and being part of a the community, they come. And I really feel like they're out there 
there were people who were interested in faith, who had an understanding of God, but just didn't know how to express that or where to find out more about it. And just creating that opportunity uh, was, uh, was key, really. Um, so we just kind of got on from there. I won't give you a whole plotted uh, story of it all, but uh, we've got a, a number of people there who are, uh, who are part of this now. And uh, there's a, a little evangelical church, which was on the estate as well. They've now come and joined us. Uh, so it's a Methodist Anglican evangelical <laughs> church, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, and only the other week, uh, this Eritrean Pentecostal guy got in touch and said that his church were looking for new premises. So we've now got, a, they're not joining with us completely, but they're going to be part of using the building as well. So you never know, in the future it might be a Methodist, Anglican, Evangelical, Pentecostal uh, mashup. <laughs> I'm not sure how that would work. But uh, yeah, we had a vote uh, a few weeks ago and 96% of the church uh, said that they wanted to make all these changes permanent together with the the vision that we've got going forward, which is to be Christ's light in the community of Fesian Park Farm. Light being very much a key theme for everything that's happened with a beacon name. Uh, so light stands for living as loved children of God, investing in young people, growing new disciples and leaders for Jesus, helping plant churches across Warsaw and North Birmingham, and transforming the community of Fesian Park Farm through fresh expressions of church. Yeah? Oh, and the launch. Sorry, the launch. Okay. Sorry. I'll have another round of applause in a moment. Um, so I've been handing out little flyers for the relaunch of Beacon Church, which is on the 12th of November, uh, which is a Saturday between 5 and 8 p.m. It would be wonderful to see as many of you here and who aren't here uh, who, who can come along. Uh, Hopefully it'll just be a really good, uh, fun afternoon. Uh, we've got stuff for kids going on, bouncy castles, uh, messy church, games. Uh, we've got a bonfire, Beacon Church again. Uh, we've got some food. Hello. And uh, we've, got, um, uh, we've got some live worship music as well as, um, as, well as the Bishop of Wolverhampton, Bishop Clive, is going to come and hopefully say just a few words. And, uh, and pray for the relaunch. So if you're around on the 12th of November, 5 to 8 p.m., probably be raining, as Emma says. Everything I tend to organise, it rains on. But uh, it'll be indoors as well. So uh, come along, it'll be great to see you. Excellent. Rain is good. <laughs> the Lord reigns. He does. Oh, and um, rain brings life in water. So we're going to pray for Chris now. Uh, and um, if, maybe if some staff and wardens could come up and uh, we can gather around Chris and if he's comfortable we can uh, lay hands on him and send him out uh, yeah so are there any staff and wardens around I did tip one or two of them here's one where are the others there's two um, yeah and please join in these prayers um, that God will bless Chris and Amy and Charlotte and Sophie that he will bless the beacon and its church and um, prosper his work, may his kingdom come. That's what we need to pray. So, uh, yeah, let's pray those things now. If you want to lay hands on Chris, you can do that. And if you can keep one hand free, so when I give you the microphone, you can carry on praying. Um, Father God, thank you for bringing us this far. Thank you that at a time and in a church where people don't get the importance of planting, that you are still at work, you are active, and you are making things happen because you are great and good and you cannot do otherwise than love and reach out to the people you created. As Chris goes forward, Lord, with Amy and Charlotte and Sophie, please would you bless and protect them. Would you make your face shine on them and be gracious to them. May they know the light of your face on them, bringing them peace and joy in you and each other. And um, may all that happens at that church, Lord, in Fizi, bring glory to your name. Amen. Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for Chris. Thank you for everything that he is and everything that he has done for us at St. Peter's. Thank you for all the work, the tremendous work that he's done behind the scenes, especially in COVID. 
and thank you for the team that um, has supported him and, um, and yeah, he's been part of the team. And I just pray, Lord, that you will send him out now and um, form another team around him so that he can continue this amazing work that he um, is uh, called to do. So I pray that you will help him, use him to shine your light on the um, Fizi estate. Amen. Yes, Lord, we thank you for Chris and his family. Um, we just pray that the people of Fizi will flood through those doors and uh, that the light will shine from those, that, that church all over that area and uh, they'll come to know God's love. Amen. Yeah, Lord, thank you so much for Chris and thank you for the amazing passion that he has for the mission of the church. Thank you that he feels so strongly about reaching out into communities and bringing your word to all the people that live there. And Lord, we ask that you continue to equip him with everything he needs, embolden him to go out and to spread your good news in the community of Fizi and beyond. So, Lord, thank you so much for Chris. Amen. Amen. Chris, I'm sure you'll keep us posted. Come and see us every now and then. Don't go anywhere because you're doing the reading. And um, there's one on there if you want it. Yeah, keep us posted. So, November the 12th, Saturday evening, 5 till 8. Um, it'd be good to see lots of St. Peter's folk there just supporting this amazing thing that is happening. Thank you, Chris, for doing this. So appreciated. Right, first reading. Um, you should be close to a Bible, um, and it will appear on the screens as well. But here's our reading about harvest and the Thanksgiving. So this reading is from Deuteronomy, and it's chapter, <clears throat> it's chapter 26, verses 1 to 11. When you come into the land that the Lord is giving you for an inheritance and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and he sojourned there, few in number, and he became a great nation great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. And then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought, up, brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God, and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. Thank you, Chris. That's on page 167, if you're struggling to find it. Page 167. Uh, keep that page open, because I want us to have a little think about it. Page 167, Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verses 1 to 11. Um, it's very appropriate reading for harvest, because it's all about bringing the first fruits of the land to God in thanksgiving for everything that God has done. And... Um, 
if you're wondering what to thank God for, to praise God for, there are three things. This is what I want you to take away today. Three things that you can always use for praise and worship and thanksgiving. One is who God is. Another is who we are, who you are, who I am in God, my new identity. And the third is everything, every good thing God gives us. Who God is, who I am, who we are, and every good thing he's given us. There's lots of scope for praise and thanksgiving there, I think. Who God is, who I am, and everything God, God has given us. We did a lot of say after me in the hall, didn't we? Does it help to, to go in or do you feel patronized? Say after me, anyway. Who God is, who I am, and every good thing he's given us. Those are the things that we can use to be thankful to God for, to worship him for. And um, if ever you're stuck, if ever you're down in the dumps, just start praising and worshiping God, who God is. Think about his nature, how great and powerful and wonderful he is. Think about what he's done in Jesus. Think about how amazing Jesus is. Ask for the power of the Holy Spirit, how tender and strong the Holy Spirit is. Think about what God has done for you, who you really are. You're a son and daughter of God Almighty. You're an unceasing spiritual being with an eternal destiny in God's good universe. You can give praise for, to God for bringing you, and you can step into who you really are. Instead of thinking the worst, fearing the worst, knocking yourself down, remember who God says you are. And then just for every good thing that you can think of that God has given us. And that's what that first reading in Deuteronomy is about, and it talks about giving the first fruit. Um, when you come into the land, you shall take some of the first root of all the ground which you harvest from the land that God is giving you. And you shall go to the place that you'll, the Lord your God will choose to make his name dwell there. And you'll give to the people in charge those, those gifts. So these gifts symbolize our gratitude to God. They symbolize us remembering who God is. They symbolize remembering who we are in him. And they symbolize all the good things God has done for us. But if you look into that story or that passage, you will see that there is a story that goes along with it. It's not just an abstract giving of gifts out of the blue. It comes in the context of what God is doing with and for his people. If you look at verse 5. It tells something of the story of God's people at that time. You shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father. He went down into Egypt and sojourned there, stayed there, in exile there. Few in, there, few in number, and there he became a, a nation, great, mighty, and populous. Do you remember how Joseph and his brothers had a bit of a to-do? And they were arguing, and um, one of them, Joseph, was thrown down the well, as the kids have been telling us in recent weeks. God sorted it all out. And God raised up a mighty nation from that troubled family. He did great things. And they made a great difference in Egypt. But as time went on, the Egyptians, it says, verse 6, you can read it there. The Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us. They turned them into slaves. God's people were enslaved in Egypt. They, they had hard labor laid on them. So what did they do? They cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice, it says, and saw our affliction, our toil, and, an oppre and our oppression, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders, and he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now, the writer goes on, and now I bring the first fruit of the ground which you, O oh Lord, have given me. Our response to God is part of the story of what he is doing, what, he's, what he does to rescue us and save us and get us out of trouble and get us out of oppression and difficulty and bring us to a good place. Who God is, he's the saviour, he's the sort of God who, having created us, rescues and saves us. Who am I? I'm the one that God loves. Each one of us can say that. I, we are the people he rescues and saves. And he gives us all kinds of good things. Things to eat, places to shelter, places to live, life and health and strength such as we have it. 
It's part of God's story, who God is, who we are, and what he gives us. We've been blessed. And in our story, this is where we've come, isn't it? This is where St. Peter's Church has come. After being on the verge of closure, after lots of prayer and crying to the Lord, God has sent new people. God has sent new life, new hope into this place so that we can, just like Chris is a beacon in Fizi, we're a beacon here too. We can, we can beacon as the best of them because we have the light of God shining from us, who God is, who we are, and what he's done for us. This is our journey. And today, we can say thank you, Lord, for bringing us this far, and here are some of our gifts that you gave us in the first place that we're giving back to you because we are so pleased to see you at work among us doing what you do. We've been blessed. God has got us out of a difficult spot. The journey has been much longer than we thought. We thought this would all be done in two years. Do you remember? Do you remember those early days? Yeah, we'll get the buildings. It won't take long. Oh, my goodness. Talk about the Egyptians wandering around in the desert for generations. That's how it felt. It's been seven or eight years where we thought it would take one or two. But here we are, by the grace and goodness of God. We have another reading. I think, Jill, you're going to read this one, aren't you? Are you ready to read to us? If I bring you the microphone, can you read it out? Okay. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. This reading is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God indeed. Thank you, Jill, for reading that. Um, do have a look. This is a, another wonderful passage. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. It's on page 982, if the page numbers. Do grab a Bible. There should be plenty of Bibles lying around. If you want a Bible and you haven't got one, stick your hand up and we'll bring you on. Everybody's there. Page 982. This is on the same theme, isn't it? When we know we need something, when we know we want something, what do we do? We cry out to the Lord. And we give him thanks. We say how great and good he is. We rejoice in who he's made us, his sons and daughters, his people. And we think of every good thing that he gives us. We rejoice in the Lord always. Again, Paul writes, I say rejoice. God is joyful. I sometimes forget because I get so wrapped up in the things that have to be done and sorted out and running around doing this, that and the other. I forget that God is much, much busier than any of us can even begin to imagine. But he's joyful all the time, despite all the troubles of the world. We can rejoice because God is love and joy and peace. The Lord is at hand. He's nearby. He's not far distant. He's not a long, long way away. He's with us right now. He's as close to you as the person sitting next to you or near to you, if not closer. He lives in you by his spirit. The Lord is at hand. So don't be anxious. Don't be anxious about anything. It takes us a while for that message to get through, doesn't it, sometimes? Our default state, our flesh, our unassisted human nature, 
as the Bible calls it, our flesh, kicks in and we think the worst. And we think that if we think about it long enough and hard enough and worry enough to show that we care enough, then uh, something different might... It doesn't work that way, does it? Worrying doesn't change anything, but still we do it. The Lord is at hand, Paul writes. So don't be anxious about anything. What to do instead? Well, by prayer and supplication. Supplication is just a big word for asking. Please would you supply what we need, Lord. And with thanksgiving, remembering who God is, remembering who he's made us, remembering every good thing he gives us. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which just comes to us, we don't understand why or how it comes, it just sometimes just comes to us because that's who God is. That peace, which surpasses our understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Jesus. And then Paul goes on to remind us where to put our minds. You are the one who can change what you think. No one else can change what you're thinking. You can choose what to think. Did you know that? That's one of the most fundamental human freedoms to choose what to think. Yeah. You can choose what to think at any moment about what's happening all around you. I'm really pleased that Obi's here. Hi, Obi. You all right? Yeah. And this is what Paul says. This is how we're to think. Whatever is true, brothers and sisters, that means. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just and pure, whatever is lovely, commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, those are the things you should choose to think about. Whatever they are, those good things. Our kids are great. They're worth thinking about. Yeah, they definitely are. Think about, choose to think about those things. If you've got a mind that's trained to worry and be anxious and see the worst, I find myself going down that path sometimes. Remember that you can choose what you think about with the grace and help of the Holy Spirit as well, of course. Think about the good things. Think about how great and good God is. Read about him in the Bible. Talk to him. Listen to him. Remember Jesus, what he did, how he died and rose, how he lives in us by the power of his spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of us. And you can know that and you can come back to that to help you think about and put into practice those wonderful things that Paul talks about. We have been blessed. We will be blessed. We've come on a journey. But this is the way forward, isn't it? We still have things we need to do with the building. There's still plenty to do with ourselves and become more like Jesus and follow him more closely and bring that good news to other people too. This is how we go forward as we give thanks for what has happened and how God has got us from the past to the present. Rejoice, pray, ask, trust. God is at hand and he's with us. We have one more reading. Did I ask Anton? Anton, want to come and read that one? It's John chapter 6. And if you want to follow it, if you can't see it on screen, it's on page 891. John chapter 6. Thanks, Anton. I was going to get away with being able to sit down, right, Jean, then, but obviously not. So this reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 25 to 35. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus then said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. 
And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will not hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. It's so good to have those gifts there. I'm tempted to sneak off with a few of them later. I'm not going to. They're going to Croft School. God has given me plenty to eat. Jesus is saying the most important thing of all isn't just physical food. It's what we really need to really live. And what we really need to really live is a real experience of the reality of Jesus. Knowing Jesus, feeding on Him spiritually, depending on God for every good gift that we need, that's the most important thing of all. That's the message that we need to hear, that our community needs to hear. That's the message that this building exists to proclaim. It's lovely to have a new carpet and a nice floor and a heating system that works. It's lovely to be able to come in here and share breakfast with friends and family. It's great to see the kids running around and causing chaos in the house of the Lord because he loves them so much. What makes it all work? What makes it all worthwhile is knowing Jesus for ourselves. I am the bread of life, he says. Whoever comes to me will not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. He isn't just talking about food, though, physical food, though he does provide that. There are so many stories in the Bible of Jesus providing physical food for people to eat, and we can look to him to do that. God wants to bless us, of course, in body. But there's more to it. Jesus talks about bread because it's something very basic. Give us today our daily bread, we pray. Give us today everything we need today, the basics, the most important stuff. And then he says he's the living bread. His presence is the reality that we need. It's through Jesus that we get to know all we need to know about God. It's through what Jesus did, his dying, his rising, his miracles, his teaching, his ascension, his reigning and ruling, all those things that we see in the windows that we've been thinking about in the past few months. That's what gets us access to God. That's what gets us the living bread. We can know Jesus for ourselves and feed on him. When we're down and anxious, we can come to him and just rest on him, knowing that he reigns and rules. When we need new energy and we hope, we can come to Jesus and look to him and everything he's done and said and hear his voice affirming us, renewing us, Whatever the situation is that we're going through in life, we can learn to trust him enough so that we can say that even if I go through the darkest valley of them all, I don't have to be afraid because, Lord, you are with me. That's the sort of thing Jesus is talking about, I think, when he says, I am the bread of life. And that whatever hungers and thirsts we have, there is always something better available in Jesus, the true bread, the living water. The biggest blessing of all, this harvest, is Jesus, what he's done, who he is. We can receive him even as we give him back something of what he has given us. That's the invitation. We've come on a journey. We're excited this morning to be back in this new building and we're excited to see Chris and all involved at Feezy stepping out as well on their journey. But it's all about Jesus in the end. It's all about the God who reveals himself in Jesus so that we know how great and good he is. We become the men and women we're meant to be and we can enjoy and share every good thing he gives us. Praise and thanksgiving, worship and trust. Remember how great God is. Remember that you're a little kid in his eyes and he loves you very much. And remember every good thing he gives you. And just give him something back, whether it's the harvest gifts, your time, your money, your worship. Give him your life. Follow Jesus. 
learn to do what he says in the knowledge of his love and care. And then together, let's see where we go next. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you again for being so amazing, for creating us and sustaining us. Thank you for sending Jesus to rescue us and to raise us up. Thank you for adopting us into your family and making us your much-loved sons and daughters. Jesus, thank you that you reign and rule and that one day we'll be with you, eternal spiritual beings with an eternal destiny in your good universe. Thank you this day, Lord, for every good thing you have given us. Give us grace to follow where you lead, Lord Jesus. Give us grace to give up our old selves and trade, in, trade it in for the new. Strengthen us, bless us, guide us and lead us forward, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We're going to share communion in a moment. Chris is going to lead us uh, in a, the communion prayers. And we're going to receive that bread. Jesus is the living bread. And this is one way of receiving Jesus. He'll be with us by his spirit as well. So, please would you stand and we'll sing a song about how good God has been. And we'll get ready to share communion. We'll be up at the rail as we used to be before. If you haven't done that before, just come up to the rail at the right time and, and kneel by the rail if you're comfortable doing that and you're able to do that. Um, or if you want us to bring something to you, just wave and we can do it that way. Just enjoy the presence of God here today as we come back to our building. Let's sing. Thanks. This is a 
you like to take a seat? So we're going to share communion now. Uh, we'll pray together before we receive the bread and the wine. Hopefully all the words will appear on the screen there, if you can see them. Uh, I will say the words in dark, and if you could respond with the words in green, uh, that would be wonderful. And then, as Gav said, when we receive a bread and the wine, we'll go up to the, uh, the altar at the top there. And uh, if you just come forward and kind of form a line across the, uh, the rail, if you want to stand or kneel, uh, it's completely up to you, uh, obviously. Uh, if you don't want to see, receive the bread or the wine then, and you want me to pray, then just put your hands down and I'll, I'll pray for you uh, happily. We've also got gluten-free wafers here. We've got non-alcoholic wine. Uh, so if, I, if you want either of those, then just make that known uh, to us uh, at the time and we will uh, we'll get that for you. So shall we pray together? The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise, and we join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy God, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. And on the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup and he gave it and he said, This is my blood, shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. And therefore, Father, with this bread and with this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again. He's alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. So send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ. With opened eyes and hearts on fire, may we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, 
the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Yeah. 
Maybe just enjoy the presence of God for a moment. He's with you and he's in you. And he loves you and he loves you and he forgives you and he heals you and he loves you. Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing us this far. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you that we have hope now and forever because you are with us. We thank you for every good gift. And above all, we thank you for you for showing us God, for making us who we are, and for every good gift. Amen. Amen. Have a seat just for a moment. We're going to sing one more song, I think, and then it's round two on the breakfast. If you didn't get your breakfast on the way in, if you want your lunch before you go, it looks like it's all ready to go again. Um, lots of things to work out how to run things, so if it's all very confusing, Apologies, and we'll get the AV system going again eventually, and lots of other things. But today, isn't it just good to be back in this building in, in a new way? It's wonderful. And it is great to think that Chris is leading out another church today there as well. Have you got some kids stuff to show off? Sorry, I nearly forgot. Here's Purse. Have you got an interpreter? Can someone come and interpret and help us? Who's... 
Is that Liv? Is Liv coming? Who's coming? Come on, kids. Show us. Tell us what you got. Tell us what you've been doing today. What have you been doing today? What have you been doing? Go for it. Wait, what am I gonna say? Joseph had eleven brothers, but his father loved Joseph the best. One time he gave Joseph a beautiful colorful coat. Joseph's brothers were angry because of the coat and they decided that would throw him into in a well. Soon after, they sold him as a slave and lied to their father, saying Joseph had been killed. Jo Joseph had been taken to Egypt and sold to a man named Potiphar. Potiphar liked Joseph because he always did his best and was honest. Pharaoh's wife was angry and told Pharaoh that Joseph was a bad man. Potiphar believed his wife's lie and sent Joseph to prison. Joseph interrupted Pharaoh's dream, was realized from prison and was made a great leader of Egypt. At the end, Joseph helped, forgave his brothers when they came to Egypt looking for food because of a famine. Very good, well read, and well done. Can we give them a round of applause? Well done, kids. Thank you so much. Remember all the mess and all the trouble that Joseph got in, and God delivered him from them all. Uh, I'm looking to see where Kate, there she is. Uh, Chris, you have to come up here, because uh, we've got a present for you as well. Uh, yes, maybe we should have done this. Anyway, here we are. Uh, we have a card and we have a thank you present and the warden's going to say something, is she? Are you going to say something? Um, this is just to say thank you to Chris for everything he has done and uh, we wish you all the best for your future. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful to spend uh, the last three years with you, even though half of that, of course, was spent sitting behind a computer screen looking at you. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just been wonderful to get to know you, get to know this community better, to see the transformation in the building as well. And uh, yeah, well, our prayers will continue to be with you. And uh, it'd be lovely to come and see you again and uh, see how you're all getting on. But uh, thank you so much for all your love and your support, uh, your care and your prayers. It's been greatly appreciated. Brilliant, thank you. Those of you on the email list, you will be getting an email this week because um, we have to change the bank account. Um, so you'll expect an email telling you what to do in the change of the church bank account this week. Don't look at me like that. It's more interesting than this. Oh, it's not really that interesting. But it's just important that you look out for that email and any questions, ask Colin. Colin, can you just stick your hands in the air and wave so as everyone knows who you are? This is Colin, the treasurer. And um, he will advise and help you if you need help in coming to terms with our new bank account. Let's stand, let's sing one more song, and um, there's going to be lots of banners by the looks of it. Um, yeah, let's sing our last one. Every color of the rainbow 
listening hard. I can't hear all the noises of creation making music in my ears. And I think to myself, so I'll sing it. Right, so in a moment there's going to be tea and coffee and food over there, but I'm just going to say a final prayer before we go uh, out. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are with us, that you have provided everything that we will ever need, whether it is physical or whether it is just the life that you offer, the food that you give us, which nourishes our souls. And as we take hold of that life, as we allow you to nourish us, send us out into your world to live, to tell those around us how much they are loved by you. May we do that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all and see you soon. Have some food though first. <laughs>